what's good peeps welcome back to another video as you can tell by the title we're going to have another interview alright close friend of mine good remake great remake actually alright and owner of East Wing Productions yeah um of course the title says it all his name is Jimmy Q and trust me guys this interview is packed with a lot of information I got a lot of information you can tell by the expression on my face in the video especially and so get yourself like a notepad and a pencil or a pen or you know do it digitally right but once you get into this interview trust me you're going to get a lot of valuable information so right after the introduction I'm just gonna go straight into the interview guys hey guys welcome back to another video um i think i already did this in the introduction but nonetheless you guys would be aware that we're interviewing none other than jimmy q um and so i just gonna have him introduce himself and then we'll get right into the questions go ahead jimmy all right so bless up first of all respect manners thanks for having me on your channel listen me um for those who don't know me jimmy q i go by the name jimmy q j a some call me jimmy q ja um depending on the country that you're looking at my profile from i'm a dj turned producer slash um featured artist I'll explain each of that. First of all, I'm a DJ and broadcaster on radio since um, 2011 to now. Right. Started in New Start 93 FM in Jamaica. And now I'm in Linkage Radio in New York. That's 104.5. Um, the producer aspect, my label <laughs> right here, mm -hmm. Eastwick Productions. I launched that in 2017. Drop a first reading with um, Studio Vibes. Keep rich, but I general a bag of artists on the rhythm. I took a break, look a hiatus, finished school, and then in 2021, which is this year, in January, I dropped my first rhythm, which is Blue Swift rhythm. I guess we can get into that later on. Yeah. And what else did I say? Um, so DJ producer, broadcaster. Yeah, I just mean that basically. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. a lot of um, lot of hats. hats, lot of hats, definitely. <laughs> All right, but yep. of course, you know, we're going to start a focus on the remixing aspect of things initially. As you mentioned, we're, we're going to look at the, the production side of things because there are definitely some things that I would want to touch on um, in regards to that. But um, first of all, how long have you been remixing, if at all? <laughs> all right, yo, remixing started for me in high school when I got my first laptop because back in the day, I used to just play CDs. Um, I learned to play LPs, but we didn't play much LPs in the party because my generation, we just learned to use it. We didn't have to use it. I right. had more CD portions and all that. Um, my first remix was actually with two CDs. I play a beat and the other song was on another rhythm, you know, but I take out the bass right. and then we try and thing on it. So it have a vibe. No, when I got my first laptop, we decided to say, yo, I'm going to try to do this thing. And my passion at that time, because as a country youth, I'm from Westmoreland. As a country youth, you try to make your name in the party by showing the elders and that, look, I know old school, I know retro, and I can still bring that new vibe and the old vibe, and it just come off seamless. So <clears throat> what sparked my first remix after the whole CD matching thing I'm going to tell you about? All right. There's this program called Acoustica Mixcraft. I don't know if you know it, but Acoustica Mixcraft, yeah, it's on all. He was in the period of um, LimeWire and them during the time. Like, he was uh, in the period of um, Acid. Um, I think it was Sony that made Acid. Yeah. And you had this other this other one called, um, I don't remember. Them time, the FL student named Fruity Loops. So mm -hmm. before I, I got into Fruity Loops, I was an acoustic mix craft. Now, it's a simple um, layout, duh, like every other duh. You have the multi-track channels and you say, all right. Redeem myself, a couple of so. But at that time, I did not know how to um, change the pitch or the speed of the song right. in the dark. <laughs> See, <laughs> so how I made the first remix, put the rhythm up at the top. And what I did is I got the slicer tool at the time and I cut piece of the voice. I drop a right here, so cut piece, I drop this, so cut the next piece, and I drop it. And somehow managed to somewhat beat much. And, and match the vibes to the rhythm. It wasn't perfect, people trust me, but it did have a vibe. Mm -hmm. It was a oh, I can't remember the I can't remember the first song. I remember it was an old school rhythm, it's a duck rhythm. I don't remember which song it was. And um bring it, 
them send them have the, the, the Motorola L6 or the L7, one of them. Put the song on my phone. <laughs> People are old money at that. Anyways, <laughs> put the song on my phone. I go to school and my bridging. I linked them up and we did it and we played it. And I said, yo, this bad, wait, wait, wait. At the time, DJ Badge, who was my best friend and still is, in my DJ in the, in the business, so they bring me in the music. So whatever projects we work on, our new song we find, our remixes, our rhythm, and we just share with each other. And yeah. It was just a vibe. So Acoustic and Mixcraft, that was my very first da into making remixes. Then I moved on to Fruity Loops, when they did name Fruity Loops. Mm-hmm. And... You know, we used to record artists on old school rhythms and get acapellas we can find and remix and thing. Now, the very first remix that gave me a little bit of forward was a song by Frostman Brilliant. But that not hard for you. Forget yell that not hard for you. That was in 2018, I think the song came out. And mm-hmm. come on, friend, for the first time, and we meet the artist. And I said, Bum, but I met the remixer. See the artist, and the remix get a lot of streams on SoundCloud and thing. Um, Last of the account, because back in then I was using DJ Q876. Now I'm just Jimmy Q with Ja, Jimmy Q with JA everywhere. Mm. So I lose the account. Eh? But I met him in CT at a radio station. Um, I was playing there in the summer. Meet him and show him the remix. And him and say, yo, him like the vibe. But at the same time, me now kind of, in my head, I said, I can't believe, say, yo, I met the remix of this artist, so I rate and respect the song, because the song mm-hmm. was doing really well. Yeah. And yeah. I remix on a, on a hip hop rhythm, and the boss rate it. I mean, just, you know? <laughs> just yeah, definitely. I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. Definitely. Yeah. The, the experience, though, that, that, that's like what? Currently, I would say about 20 years experience? <laughs> Give me your age. Um, yeah, because the thing is, you know, um, People might not know I'm 32 years old. So nice. okay. Oh, okay, yeah. definitely. And I've been playing music since probably 12 or, or so, but mm-hmm. professionally, um, probably since 18, 19, Zine. But I've been doing remixes all my life. You know, I, I make remixes and I keep them because I like my when my set sounds special. And even now, when I get the dub plates, because Echo Vibe Sound is a sound system I work with now, me and my cousin. Okay. And when we get it, we get them split a cappellas and we do a lot of remixes. So if me a juggler, a hip hop juggling, we can drop some dancehall in there. And it also makes transitioning into dancehall easier. Um, vice versa, we do a hip hop and a dancehall rhythm, dancehall and a hip hop rhythm, Afrobeat, Soca, etc. Um, there was this time when Major Lazer was in Jamaica when EDM was the thing. Yeah. I made so many EDM remixes. Um, we have a 120 BPM, 135. I have mm-hmm. um one of my favorites in that um time was a song called Wine Slot. Um DJ Booker introduced me to that song. And a remix of spice on it. And I tell us it, it bad everyone to play it because EDM was the rave that time. Right. I remixed um my boy Skrillex. Skrillex had this this song, I can't remember what it's called now, but it was just mostly instrumental as most of his songs are, and then I got some woman, me drop a dance, a cartel on it. Crazy thing again. So I have a lot of these remixes. And I, I'm pretty sure that you're going to put a feature video in here. I'll play some of the remixes and I'll also build one on spot so I can see the process. All right. Thank you very much for that. Definitely. Um, you've, you've, you've covered a lot of the questions I had to ask, like, you know, your first remix, your first da. Uh, um, yeah. But like a general question that I like to ask is like the thought process that goes behind building certain remixes because especially like as you mentioned the EDM era it wasn't as mm-hmm. easy to build a remix in those times so what's normally like a thought process going into that well um, I based my remixes off my juggling um so my juggling is normally by theme so if I'm gonna build a remix it must make sense and it must match a certain theme there is no way I go find me a remix of one man song and the other song on the beat originally is a love song um it just like a hard to merge them two kind of vibe there you see me mm-hmm. so I, I like to follow themes um i like to flip um i don't make i don't remix in the same genre so i don't put a dancer and next dancer with my hip-hop and next hip-hop with him i like to i like to switch genres i like to go old school i like to flip the new song them from the old rhythm i like to find the original samples that were used to make some of these new beats all right the song them back on the old rhythm and make a juggling. So 
that's the kind of vibe. Or sometimes I just hear a word and I do wordplay. A lot of DJs do wordplay and I like doing wordplay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> wordplay helps in, in conceptualizing a remix. I agree with you there. Yeah, um, love her. But let me, let me ask you, though, like, as you mentioned, you, you don't keep it on one genre. So that definitely means that you've maybe, maybe had some good times and some bad times. What's been like probably one of the best remix that you can recall offhand and probably one of your worst if you can recall as well? I love this. <laughs> um, yo, I had, a, I had a cartel, how the cartel go again? Yo, promise you, I'm going to look it up and put it in here. I had a cartel in the same EDM era when I was on radio at Newstock. And this, this, it was a fast, fast song. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you what the duck get. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. Yeah, it was where the duck get. But I put it on a very, very, very fast beat. Totally mm-hmm. faster than how the cartel play. Right. And when we drop it with that EDM, everybody was like, one of them might beat like the regular song. And then you hear the cartel coming up like, what? So I dropped it on the radio and my call is calling and everybody I say, yo, bad one, blah, 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 and pull up on, you know, because mm-hmm. it was an interactive show that I ran. So people normally call in, request songs, big right. up people, whatever. Uh-huh. But that was like one of my favorite remixes. Um, one of my favorite from me. Okay. My, my favorite remixer <laughs> would have to be um, something from Black Chinese, Willy Chin, Chinese Assassin, Black Assassin Days. Shoot you know? Black um, Chinese. Those guys put together some top notch remixes, but I can't not mention DJ Absolute, who is a, who's a, a modern day remixer now and DJ and producer. Yeah. I can't not mention DJ Jer from Utah. Those are two of the, the wickedest youths out there right now. Two yeah, of def- the wickedest. Definitely, they're under roster to be interviewed as well. So you guys yeah, can look totally. forward to that. Definitely. You know. yeah. I mean, sometimes I hear Absolute and Jer do some remixes that. They make you think, you see me? They make you like, when come up with that from? When, when get that from, you know? And it make you feel like you want to move or you just want to juggle them something. As a DJ, you just hear a song, you feel like you want to play it. That's what Jerry Remix do. And that's where Absolute Remix do. And Absolute is, is very crazy with effects. So, you know? Right, yeah, definitely. Def- I definitely can agree with it there, you know? Right. Even yeah. in one of his latest projects, I think it was Little Bit of Money. That Remix... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he brought it back to the um the OJ's song. Mm-hmm. Money, money, money. Yeah, um, definitely. The love of money style, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely have to agree with you here. Um, just to start to uh, wrap up this portion of the interview though, like what would be your top three, probably top four if anything, advice towards um any young person looking to go into DJ into remixing more specifically? Remixing, um, top four. Yo, it's like whenever I get them kind of question, like top three, top four, or something else, just like, judge, I'm up with them. <laughs> top four ad, um, advice if you're going to remix in art. Right, one, before you start a remix, I mean, there's no set process. Everybody have their own um, way to go about it, right? There's no cookie cutter that going to say, oh, this is the way to do it, or, or I won't work. Um, choose a DAW, digital audio workstation. Choose a, a software that you are familiar with. Um, I always say you don't need to learn all of them. You just need to master one. And once you master that one and you can maneuver it properly, you can do whatever you want. You can be very creative. So that's the first thing. Choose a software that you're comfortable with. If you remix on the fly, like you just record it live and it's um, Serato or virtual DJ or whatever you're doing, fine. Choose a software that works best for you. That's one. Um, two, conceptualize. Um, Sometimes it's good to, to, to think about what you're going to make before you start making it because sometimes you, you might get lost in any direction. You see me? Mm-hmm. Um, three, put an old school beat on it. <laughs> 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 That's what, one of my favorite things. Put an old school beat. But um, choose the rhythm carefully. Um, I like to work with themes. You don't have to do what I do. You can do wordplay, you can do themes, you can do mashups, you can do whatever you feel like. As a matter of fact, you can do a mashup of the same song on the same beat without changing anything, just change around the words, um, make the artist say something else. It's, it's just about creativity and being witty. And finally, just have fun. You never know if somebody ever like it's a product. Everybody won't like it and everybody won't hate it. Just make it and make sure so you like it and you have fun with it. Put it out there if you feel like release it or just play it for your friends. Isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, that's definitely. my top four. 
definitely. Especially that last one. A lot of persons yep. going into it, taking it a bit too serious sometimes. And yeah, man, have fun, it was man. a fun aspect of it. You know? like, like your own B side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. That that was pure fun. Pure fun. Pure yeah. fun. It's but yeah, uh, as I said, that was started wrapping up the remix aspect of things in a sense. But um, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, I wanted to touch on the production side of things just a bit. Uh, because for one, um, with regards to remixing, it is a thing that I've seemed to have find, found problematic in a sense that, all right, you know, you're remixing something from this producer and that producer. But, you know, things like crediting the producer for one or even a matter where to get certain tools to create the remix. How has that been for you in terms of you trying to get to a producer as well as if persons wanted to reach out to you to get content from your camp? All right. Um, I won't lie. It's been a, a little bit easier for me because of, of uh, my affiliations with other DJs and being on radio. So getting acapellas, getting instrumentals, I have like a, um, what do you call it now? I have good resources. I have friends who are, every station in Jamaica you can think of, I have people right. who work there are my friends. Um, every produ- almost every, not, not every, but almost every production house will have links because it's not that I, get, I got up one day and I just got these links or whatever. It's relationships that I've formed over the years, um, mutual support and respect that we have. We have earned mutual trust from each other. So a man, he say, yo, Jimmy, listen, I get an instrumental, don't leak it. If I get that instrumental, you definitely can't get it. You'll hear me use it to make a remix or whatever, or make a special intro. Um, but you'll never get it because of the trust and the relationship. There are acapellas for certain songs that, you know, we'll get it from the studio. And then there, there are some DJs, um, some producers will release acapellas or instrumentals with them song or with them rhythm. You see me? But these days you have um, acapella extracting software and, and websites. They are not 100% um, clean like the, or like the studio version acapella, but you can get very close. Right. And with the use of um, like noise suppressors and you know effects, you can definitely clean them up to sound very good. And it's, it's a remix. You, you know, you don't need to do like a, a great production. But do a good production, you know. Um, for me, I don't release <laughs> my readings. Um, but if yo, if so, if somebody reach out to me and say, yo, you know, I like your song and I want to make a remix. Um, first of all, I have to get clearance from the artist to release the acapella because remember, it's their intellectual property. Right. Um, so right. some songs that I do, I own hundred percent of the rights. Some are 50-50, some are sixty forty, etc. So. If I don't own all the rights to a acapella or to a production, I'll never just jump and say, all right, yeah, man, go ahead and do your thing. So it, it varies. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the same thing with most producers. You can't just take up somebody's um, song and say, listen, go and do what you want with it. If a remixer download the song and extract the acapella, that's on him. You know, if if, him, if the artist step to him or the producer step to him, that's on him. He can always just take it down or whatever. But yeah, for me personally, I can't just give, give away rights like that. But if I have a song and I have exclusive rights and you link me, I say, you're more that remix. Yeah, man, definitely. Actually, I would really want to hear some um, club music, house music remixes of some of my songs from Icatic. Because I have a lot of songs that have that kind of vibe. All right. So people look up Icatic. Definitely. I'll, I'll definitely link that information below. Um, I think I'll mm-hmm. actually just as well do a playlist. Or if, you, if you've done a playlist of his songs, if they're on Spotify, that's the only one I have access to right now that I think about it. Um, definitely, I'll put that in the description below uh, so that people can definitely listen to his music. I agree with you there in terms of the, the rights aspect of things. And definitely, um, with regards to just having persons sort of respect the property of other producers and artists. Uh, because it's something that I realize more and more persons are really being strict with, right? Yeah. Because I'm not sure what may have caused it. If if you know, you could probably share with us. But I'm not sure what have, may have caused it. But these days, you really get a lot of um, red tape, especially as younger DJs and um, remixers. You really get a lot of red tape, as you mentioned. The necessary networking and thing, however, has been lacking in the space especially because of the pandemic COVID. you know yeah so, yeah yeah mm-hmm. so 
I agree with you in that regard. But um, in terms of like building connections now, or even when the place open back up, what would you suggest? Because I know some some time prior to all of this, persons would have to, as I said, bleach a studio, right? And you know, live nearby yeah. persons and all of that kind of thing. But what would you suggest in terms of you know trying to build that type of network? Um, no, uh, given the, the 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 era that we're in now, in terms of the pandemic and so forth. I mean, I, I mean, this what I'm going to say you now is applicable to any era too. You know, yeah. um, stay with stay within your means. Don't offer something that you can't deliver on. Um, I will explain that to you. Like me personally, I'm, I work off principle. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. If I can't do it, I try my best to let you know that beforehand that I can't do it. Right? Don't don't promise producers or artists that you're going to support the music, and then you don't follow through. Um, and that's part of building relationships. So live within your means. If you know you're a mixtape DJ, you're a radio DJ, or you're a club DJ, or a road DJ, whatever category you fall into, or all, if you say you're going to support somebody, support them, or support them right through. Okay. Um, don't, be a, don't be a yes man. If you sound not bad, don't bother say, yeah man, make a support artist. Choose what you love and support it. Because at the end of the day, the artist will respect you and the, and the producer will respect you for it. Um, be consistent. So if you, if you decide, say, you want to work with some, some producers, them five years, pick them five years, keep them in your rotation, whatever they put, you put out, if you don't have it, link them and say, yo, may I drop a new mixtape, you know? I want them new song, you have to drop to it, or whatever. Um, get on blast lists. There are a lot of media houses that send out dance hall readings and singles uh, monthly. Get on those lists. There are websites that do blast lists that artists pay for. So it's not like it's piracy music, it's promotional um, music. So they pay these websites to blast the music or they pay the PR or whoever to send out like promotional copies with, of course, a limited time because the links normally expire. All but right. um, I'm just saying, basically, in layman terms, support for support. So support these artists and these producers, um, be consistent, and at the end of the day, the relationship will pay off. Most of these friendships and relationships that I have in the music industry now, didn't start five years ago. They started when I just started radio. And anybody can tell you, Jimmy Q played the most young artists, played the most upcoming artists. Um, yeah, we just threw you the music because I love music. If a song don't sound good, I'm going to be very straight with you and to say, yo, listen, you can you know fix up this little bit. I'm going to be one of them money. I say, yeah, man, send it, come, ray, ray, ray. And then just have it in my email sitting there. I try my best to check my email and play songs. So build relationships like that. If a man realizes you're always a support him, read him them. One day when you link him and say, yo, um, we can get an instrumental, I'm gonna build a remix or a ray. Possibly he might say no, or he might be inclined to just work with you. Most of my dub plates, and this is another topic, <laughs> most of my dub plates that I get from radio and from a sound system, they were not bought. They were just sent to me, not even requested. You see me? Wow. That is because of relationships and support. Before Skilly Beng bus, <laughs> me and claims so good Gotti Bling always from day one. Me I play Gotti Bling music and Titi Moss and, Ta and, and, and um, Titi Moss and them do dub plate and send come to me just through claims record, um, Tanto, all of them. So when Skilly Beng do him first song, when we get the brick pump brick, we get the dub plate same time. We get the 50 bag, we get the dub plate same time. And saying this to say that people, relationships. Be consistent, support people. Nesbet, same way when them Nesbet get my dream. They get the song, they dub before the song even drop. Them kind of way the people. Oh. And these are just some little to add to it. This is not about remixing, just saying that relationships pay off. Be consistent. Be consistent. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> like a mouthful, <laughs> like a whole heap. Yeah, that, that, that definitely was a whole different topic by itself, but um, nonetheless, valuable knowledge, and I appreciate that most definitely. All right. So um, just to wrap up, thanks, first of all, Jimmy, for coming on. Um, thank you very much for giving me some reference in terms of person I can probably try and see if I can get an interview with. Um, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely, jury, definitely, absolute. Um, the Black China one might be a little tricky, but I mean, I guess that might fall depending on the network, as you say. So um, thanks nonetheless once again for taking your time out for you to talk to us about remixing and the additional information. Definitely uh, appreciate that. Um, looking forward to see what you do in terms of the remix, as I said. Um, guys, yeah, that... um, 
before you wrap up, if you have a suggestion, I don't know. I mean, might or, as well. I would say do something prior year camp, right? Or if you even want to go out of your way and find something that's quite um, popular to in in these days, I guess you could try out for that and see. Right? Something probably exclusive if you can even, you know, given your vast network, you know, start to show people what is possible and all them look away there in that regard. You know, anything is possible. All right. All right. It's, it's up to nice. you. Up, up to you, mm -hmm. as I said. We're just looking forward to see how you go about processing it, um, how you go about creating it. All right. Just a uh, look into your workflow, basically. So, yeah. yeah. I might just do something using, um, I'm going to use tools that everybody can access. So, people, if you're in my final words, right. <laughs> software called Reaper. It's free for Mac and Windows. It will say you're on an evaluation period, but it never expires. Keep evaluating it. So Reaper is good, very fast and easy for remixing. Yeah. And I'll plug a website that you can use the extract acapellas. I think I'll just do that in the in the remix video. I'll use stuff that everybody can find. Definitely and appreciate that. Definitely. Make something simple and fast. So, you know, if whoever is watching can just say, oh, let me can try that. Not too much bells and whistles, but we make it bad still. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, so thanks once again. Um, let me just cut this out and I'll wrap up off screen. <laughs> First of all, once again, thanks Jimmy Q for passing through and giving us the insightful information. Um, for persons who actually got some valuable information out of the video, thank you for watching, of course. Well, nonetheless, thank you for watching, even if you didn't get much information out of it, uh, much value out of it. But um, yeah, um, all being well, as soon as the remix is available, as I said, I'll put it down in the description and I'll post it up here as well. And so you can stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, just ensure that you subscribe so you get the notification when that comes in or, you know, when you're scrolling through your subscription box, you'll see. Um, until then, and until our next video, catch you later, peace.